Well, the dark nights are finally returning and uh, that means yay for astronomers and probably nay for gardeners. We're starting to get four or five hours of dark skies a night and it's a really exciting time. I hope that you're excited as I am of what's to come in this season and all the possibilities. But I used to get quite stressed about setting up for astrophotography because it would mark limited time in the night. And here in the UK, we only get about eight to 10 completely clear all the way through nights a year. So there's a lot riding on getting the night right. There's such a lot of things to think about. And then it only takes for human error and a stupid mistake such as leaving the Batonov mask on or uh, leaving a lens cap on. And don't tell me that you've not done it because I know that some of you have. Uh, I've done it multiple times. So I'm hoping that in this video, these five tips that I've developed along the years will help you get set up faster. And if they don't help you, or if you've got other suggestions, then write them down in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you and the Astro community about what makes things faster for you. I used to struggle with the physical setup of this hobby, uh, and I don't mean lifting things, but I'm talking about being under pressure with the couple of hours that are clear each night and worrying about taking too much time to set up with all of the things that we've got to think about. Uh, all of the cables and all of the setup and where everything goes and what what things are plugged in and is the software working all correctly and particularly in polar alignment and we'll talk more about polar alignment later on because I had a particular issue with that and honestly it nearly finished my astrophotography career if you like. I ne very nearly gave up until I, I solved that issue and so I've distilled into five tips the things that I do to make sure that my setup of astrophotography on an evening is as fast as it possibly can be. And I've gone from two hours down to about five minutes in terms of being ready to set up with a portable rig that lives inside this building. So tip one is to make sure that you can keep your gear assembled as much as possible and not to be tearing down or setting up each night and you can see from my system here that I've split it down into three parts. There's the tripod, there's the mount, and there's the actual telescope with camera and everything else attached. What gear have you got and what can you keep assembled all the time, not taking everything apart? When I first began astrophotography, I used to take everything apart. I used to take the uh, camera off the system I used to take the guide scope off, I'd take the guide camera off and I'd be putting it all in separate things, trying desperately to keep it safe. But actually I quickly began to realize that that was costing me so much time. And it was at a star party when I realized everybody was packing away in about 45 minutes. And there I was long after everybody had left still going. The key was to really think about what I could leave on my system. And the game changer for me was getting a Prima Lucci Lab Eagle, but there are many other options. There's an ASI Air and there is the Astro Station and there are lots of other variations of this that you can do to speed things up. But the other thing that I realized was about storage options and you can do Pelican cases, you can do wooden storage boxes, you can do all kinds of things so long as it's in a dry and non-damp place you're in business. Of course there is a reason why all of these manufacturers are making all of their gear in red these days. <laughs> Tip two is cable management and just being able to keep all your cables spare. Now if something's going to go wrong in your night of astro imaging the likelihood is it's going to be a USB cable because they do uh, corrode or fray or damage over time and you're going to probably find that your USB cables probably need replacing every two to three years depending on how much usage that your astrophotography gear is receiving. Now you may well 
see my rig and wonder, wow, your cable management is not up to much. And it's absolutely not, but it is functional and most things are stay plugged in. The things that I don't plug in are really the cable that goes directly to the mount and another one that is the power supply that obviously needs to be plugged in to power each night. But beyond that, everything else stays plugged in. The cameras, the filter wheel, everything is there ready. Now I probably could do a better job of tidying up my cables and one of these days I'll get round to doing that. Step three is to make sure that you practice what you can during the daytime. We often think about setup at night time and the stars are already out and yes you can't see much in the daytime without your cameras assembled and dark skies but there's a whole range of things that you can do in the day. The first thing to do is just practice actually setting up your tripod, levelling it, knowing where it goes on the ground. I know for a lot of people they'll mark on the ground where the tripod legs go. I don't need to do that anymore, I just know instinctively where my tripod does go and I set up each night. I know where north is in my back garden and I know roughly where all the counterweights go to make sure that the telescope is in balance. But there are other things that you can consider such as software and making sure it's all up to date and all the drivers work, knowing what screw and bolt fits together and where everything goes is also vitally important and over probably 12 to 15 setup times you'll have this down I'm sure very quickly. Polar alignment is also something that you can speed up. Now if you've been around in the hobby a while and you're still one of these people who look like they're proposing to their mount, then stop it now. There's no need to do that method anymore. I said earlier that it used to take me two hours to set up and actually a good hour of that time was polar alignment and the pole master really changed all that for me. It's an electronic way of aligning your mount, but there are other ways of doing this. You can do it in Nina and you can do it in an ASI Air using the built-in software and it will explain to you exactly what movements you need to make in your mount to get it polar aligned. Now we sometimes overfuss, don't we as astrophotographers on polar alignment but good enough is good enough and if you know the arc second of your camera and in my case it's 1.87 arc seconds then if my polar alignment is below one arc second then really what else do I need? I don't need to be much below that. It's not going to make much of a difference. If, of course, I'm imaging with my larger rig, my Celestron Edge 8 inch, where I know that I need to get down to 0.6 in arc seconds, then my polar alignment is gonna need to be at 0.6 or less, or I'm gonna need a good night of seeing to get the, the sky quality that I need. Again, practice comes in to this area of astrophotography and once you've done this half a dozen times you'll be an absolute master at polar alignment. I'm sure many people watching already are and it's not an issue but dialing this in quite quickly and learning to do the process speedily does take time and will have a huge impact on how quickly you can set up. And my final tip is on the software side of things. Now it doesn't matter what you use, there's lots of variations of the software out there. There's an ASI Air, there's Nina, there's Sequence Generator Pro. Uh, my software of choice is Nina, but it's important to get to know the software really, really well. Now other channels do this absolutely brilliantly. Patriot Astro's got some brilliant videos, as has Queeve. I'm not going to go over that old ground because they do it so much better on their channels. So head over to their channels to find out how to dial in software really, really accurately. But making sure everything runs smoothly is going to help you not get frustrated on a night of astro imaging. Realistically, in the night where you're using anything new, a new focuser or new software or new hardware, such as a new telescope, you've got to expect that there's going to be teething issues and it's probably worth changing a mindset from I'm going to get an image tonight to actually there are two or three clear nights I'm going to spend those dialing everything in such as autofocus and meridian flips and all of those kinds of things within the software. 
It helped me enormously changing my thought process and to look at it with a scientific and calm, rational mind. So sometimes I'd not get the image I wanted or even start imaging because there'd be a problem. I'd go inside and rationally break down the problem of what's happened. So I'd encourage you to rephrase the experience. What did I learn for next time? Maybe start a book or a word file where you can jot down what went wrong and what you learnt from it. My name's Martin and this is Adventures in Astronomy. I hope you've enjoyed this episode.